Hi, this is Mrs. Alexander, and this short how-to video is going to teach you, the student, how to use the Kite Student Portal software. Understand that the Kite Student Portal software needs to be downloaded onto your device. You should find it as a desktop item. Go ahead and click on it now. Your teacher should distribute a username and password to each student. This username and password is the same password you'll use for the practice test as well as the actual EOC for Project Lead the Way courses. The username and password are case sensitive, so after your instructor gives you this information, go ahead and type it in. You will need a different access code for each day that you take the EOC. Click login and you should see a screen that looks like this. Note that I'm in the demo version. There's a sign up button in the right hand corner. It tells you what course you're taking up right next to your username. Yours should say your name or your username right up here in the right hand corner. For this demonstration, the practice test, you're gonna click take test right here. Um, for biomed courses, your test is specific for biomed, for engineering, computer science, you have different questions. This is a demo, so it's going to show us one practice question from each of those Project Lead the Way courses. After entering the practice test, read through the general directions. Please note you have the following tools. In this how-to video, we're going to explore those tools, highlighter, eraser, striker, search, notes, guideline, and magnifications. Click the green begin button. This will bring you to a window that looks similar like this with your first question. Note that this first question out of nine is biomed specific. You'll see an example for engineering and computer science as well. Notice to move along each question, you may do this by clicking the number button at the top of the screen. Numbers that are gray mean that they are unanswered. Numbers that are green with a white check mark means that you've answered something in them. You may also use the button to go backwards or forward at the top of the screen, or you may use the back and next button at the bottom of the screen. They all have the same general purpose. The tools are located on the left hand side. Notice that my pointer looks like an eraser. That's because I am clicked on the eraser tool. Go back to the pointer and you're able to point to different things. The next feature is the calculator. Instead of having a handheld calculator, Kite has provided one for you within the document. You click on it and you can use your numbers there. When you're done, there's an X. There's a highlighter feature, an eraser feature. The eraser feature may not be applicable because a lot of this test is drag, drop, match. Um, if there is one that you need to actually type your own answer, that's when the eraser will be helpful. Strike through is helpful whenever you have multiple choice because you can strike through answers that you know are not correct. The search button, when you click there, you can type in a word and it will search for it on that specific screen. So if I want to type the word head, notice that when I click the search button, it highlights. If you click the exit button, it stays highlighted and you cannot get it to go away. The only way to get it to go away is to come up here and press clear. Another feature are notes. You can take notes about specific questions. When you are done, if you press exit, it asks you if you're sure you want to delete this note. No takes you back to it. Yes, deletes out of it. Depending on your accommodations or your um, test, you may or may not see this other button right here. Magnification is an important feature for students that need their test able to be magnified. If set, if you see this, you can change your magnification from 5x all the way off to off, depending on your needs. Let's go ahead and take a look at the different types of questions. This question asks you to drag and drop the names below. So you literally click on the box and you can drag and drop it into any box that you want. I'm not saying this is a correct answer, I'm just dropping it in there. Let's say you want to change your answer, you can drag it to another one. So it's pretty nice how you can move it around until you're ready. Or you can drop it back up to the top. Another feature to talk about is right up here, there's this flag. You can flag a question if you want to come back to it because you're not sure, you're not done, you want to check it. You can use this little flag and that marks a blue flag on the top of that question. So when you go on to the next, you'll know which ones to come back and review at the end. There's also this little help button. Gives you a little help in case you're having difficulties moving around your mouse or whatnot. Let's check out the next question. The next question asks you to do drop downs. So you can drop down and choose the correct answer there. Note that once you have chose one, you can't, in order to get it off the, that answer, you have to go back to the word select 
in order to not choose it. Let's take a look at the third question. This one is to organize. You can click on the heart, drag it over to wherever you think it goes along with. Let's say I've changed my answer and I don't think lungs go with circulatory. I can click heart and check circulatory and it'll move my answers for me. But once I've done one, there's no way to erase and back out of it, which is why this flagging is helpful because maybe you chose one and you're like, ooh, I want to come back to that later. Let's flag it so I know that I'm not sure about that. To undo the flag, you just re-click the blue button and notice it disappeared. Notice that I've only done one of those four. I'm supposed to do all four to complete the question, but my check mark still says that it's done. So please, if you're wanting to stop mid-question like this and come back to it later, use your flag button so that you know to come back to it. Here's another type of question. It asks you to go ahead and click the buttons that apply. So you can click that one, that one, or that one. Notice it doesn't let me choose more than one. As I go, it doesn't, it does let me, however, uncheck if I'm unsure about my answer and I want to go back. Sort the items into the correct category. So it wants you to drag it over and sort it into the correct category, either technology or not technology. And it wants you to put them in here, and as you go, if you change your mind, you can always drag it into the other one or put it back to where it belongs. Again, notice I didn't do all the questions, but it still shows that five is done. This one wants you to order them in order of smallest to largest, so it wants you to drag them out like this to order them into the correct order. Not saying that this is correct, just showing you how you can move them around. And this is a simple multiple choice question. Notice it doesn't let you choose all that apply. It just says to choose one. If you're unsure, this one doesn't let you uncheck it. Once you pick one, you're stuck with that until you change your answer like this. Unlike the other question, it let me uncheck my box to remove my answer completely. This one does not. So again, get used to using that flag if needed. This one is a select all that apply. Notice that choose one are circles, select all that apply are squares. You can check multiple questions there. Last but not least, your answer, you have, this is gonna be very common, you have information to the left, you have a question to the right. What you can do over here is you can go down to the bottom of the screen, left-hand side, you can say, I just want to read the passage only. It gives you a bigger screen to read the question, the passage. The passage is like the background information you need. For example, on this example, you can change your sizes and press test and watch the gears rotate. That might be helpful versus having a small screen. Maybe you like them side by side, so you can do passage and questions, or you can do questions only. Questions only is where those notes would come into play. Go ahead and put whatever your answer is over here. Again, I'm just putting an answer, not saying it's correct. When you are done, you can press review and end. It will tell you red boxes mean that you're not done. Ask your teacher for help, meaning make sure you, that you show me the ones that you're not done with so we can make sure that you've finished your test completely. It does show me here that that one's flagged. Maybe it would be a good idea to go back to that, check it through and remove the flag if you're su sufficient, but you can still submit your test with a flag. When you are done, you press end and will end your test. will ask you for sure, are you sure? Yes, you can end your quest. If you're not, you can always go back. And that takes you to the end of your assessment. I want you guys to pay attention to the right-hand corner. I've showed you a different example. This is one of the biomedical science practice tests. I want you to notice that instead of just saying review and end, there is a save button. This is super important. If you are testing and something happens, say a fire alarm gets pulled or you didn't have time to finish your first section, you may press the save button to save your work. Um, it does log you out after 90 minutes and you will have to call Project Lead the Way as an instructor to have them reopen your test. Um, for an activity, but it does allow students who don't finish in one class period to go back the next day and finish their test. So notice that whenever you press save, instead of re review end, 
says that you're going to submit your test is going to be graded. Do not click review and end if you haven't finished and you need additional time. Instead, click saved and it says your responses will be saved but not submitted and you'll be logged out. Do you want to continue? Yes, so students, please use the save button instead of the review end if you're not finished with your test. Raise your hand before you do this during your EOC, uh, your end of course test, so that way you can ask a teacher for their advice on this. I wanted to show you what a student view looks like that actually has a student's name up here. Notice that this student has two practice tests for their biomedical science class. That was the teacher created two practice tests for them to do um, before the EOC. Um, there are instructions for instructors of how to do this in their the manual. Over here though, this is what it's gonna look like for you guys students. In addition to your practice tests popping up, you will see this is where your biomedical science EOC will occur. When you click it, you will be given a daily access code. This daily access code ends at about right when school ends, so it's not able to be used the next day. Your teacher will have to print you off a new access code each day that you take it. For example, if you're gonna take part one today and part two tomorrow, you'll have two separate access codes. Let's say you start part one today, you run out of time and you have to press save, your teacher will still need to print you a new access code to finish that first part. So it's not by each section has a different code, it's each day that you're given the ability to access the EOC, the end of course assessment. The features like the read to on Google or other features in your start menu of your computer are disabled when you have the Kite Student Portal open. The only way to get out of Kite once you're done is to press this close Kite button. So once you have raised your hand to let your instructor know that you're finished and they've given you the direction to go ahead and press either save or end and review, you'll need to click close Kite. It'll take you back to that image right there and it'll close it out for you. Your guys is desktop item should look like this kite right here. That's what you're going to be clicking on, the student portal. In addition to that, I'd like to add a little bit for the instructors to show you what it looks like to monitor your students during the EOC. Teachers, you will have to use the myPLTW.org site to sign in with your credentials in order to print the daily access codes and the usernames and passwords for your students. You can also monitor their practice tests and their EOC through this. When I say monitor, you can just see students' names and what question number they're on, if they're complete, that kind of thing. Log in and go up to my site, click your school's name, and go ahead and click Manage EOCs. This will take you to your MyPLTW monitoring test site. This is assuming that you've already uploaded your student rosters and your PNP codes. You're going to go to Manage Tests and Test Coordination. Then you're going to click on View Daily Access Codes. Note that it gives you the current day and the next day. You will only see those after 3.30 Eastern Time, so make sure you wait until the morning that you're going to give it or after that time the day before. After you get those access codes, it'll going to download it as a PDF, I believe, and then you can share those with your classes. You can view your test sessions here in order to see what's completed and what not. The interim button is used for practice tests. So you can actually go in and build or select the tests. So this is how you saw my students have a practice test. I clicked build as tests and I clicked um, using existing tests. I was able to click just the course that I teach. If you teach multiple, you'll have multiple drop downs there. You can name it, describe it, search it, and you can distribute it to your students. And that will give it to you automatically for all your students that are in that section. How do you know if you're ready to give the EOC? Well, under the report section, you should see that you have added in your PNP settings, your student user logger names and password. This is where you can click to go ahead and find the username and password for your students. They'll use those to log in, regardless if it's an interim or practice test or if it's the actual EOC. That's where you get that information from. And then under the dashboard is where you can see the two um, Project Lead the Way testament dates, dates that you're testing, it can show you the attempts and all that stuff here. And that is where I'm gonna end this how-to video. Remember, most of this information was provided by Project Lead the Way in a form of a PDF for all of your needs.